I've been tasked to solve a problem, and I think I found the perfect solution. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys, Jason Cam for ACK. My daughter and her family live in a remote part of Middle Tennessee, and cell phone service is basically non-existent right where she lives unless you're connected to the home internet. And they've got quite a bit of acreage there, and if her husband gets away from the main house, well, cell phone coverage doesn't cut it. And I think this box is going to do the trick. What we've got here is the latest version of the Redivus GMRS repeater. This is the 97L, I believe it is. Let me grab my notes so I don't tell you guys incorrectly. Yep, this is the 97L. This one has several upgrades over their original 97S model that I reviewed ah, roughly a year or so ago. This one includes 25 watts of power, and we'll be testing that. It is IP66 rated, meaning that uh, it is completely dustproof and it can handle strong jets of water. So they say this thing is okay to mount outside and can survive a driving rainstorm. In addition to that, this one also has high temp protection. So if the temperatures gets above 60 degrees Celsius, it's going to auto swap to low power. It also has low temperature protection. I know that's something we're usually talking about when it comes to lithium iron phosphate batteries, but this thing has low temp protection built in as well. In fact, if you want to use it, it actually includes a built in heater in this unit once the temperature drops low enough. I'm probably not going to turn that feature on because this is going to be a battery and solar powered setup when we put it in place. Now, one of the only negatives that I can say about this is the programming software itself is Windows only. Since you guys know I only run Linux, well, that kind of leaves me out for programming this repeater. However, on a good note, this repeater comes fully programmed right out of the box. So I was able to get it up and running by simply powering it up. Now the kit I got from Redivus included the repeater, it included the hand mic, it included 50 feet of RG213 coax, which we're also going to test here in a minute, and it included their antenna. And I believe the model number on that is MA09, but I'll put it on the screen if that's not correct. Now, while we're talking about the antenna, I did take an opportunity and put that thing on a temporary mass. I wanted to get it up and take a look at the SWR readings on the antenna. And I've got to say, the sweeps of that antenna looked fantastic. I think that is going to definitely do the trick when it comes to putting this repeater onto the property. All right, let's take a quick look at the LCD on the front of the unit. We've got three buttons is all we've got. You can use the arrow buttons for volume up or volume down. If you want to change the channel, you're gonna to have to press and hold one of these buttons. That takes it to channel five. This one will take it back down to channel four. If you want to lock the unit, we can long press the menu button and you'll get the icon. Notice that we're in high power mode and we're in wide band and we have a CT tone programmed in right now. Uh, press again on the menu button, long press, and you will unlock the unit. Now, the nice thing about this is it does come pre-programmed with all of the repeater frequencies that you might want to use, which is super helpful considering they don't offer their programming software for Linux. Now, let's go ahead and jump over to the workbench for a second, and I want to get a few readings. Let's find out what the power output is on this unit, and let's find out how much power it consumes while it's just sitting there, as well as when you're transmitting. All right, so currently I'm using the wall wart that is plugged up to AC power, and I have the dummy load running back here in the background. Let's go ahead and take a look at that, and I'm seeing about uh, 12 and a half, maybe peaking to 13 watts uh, when we're connected to wall power. Now, I'm curious how it's going to work when we're connected to a lithium iron phosphate battery. And now we're connected to a battery giving us roughly 13.8 volts. Let's go ahead and key that up. And we're seeing yeah, roughly about the same power there. Now that's with very short coax jumpers going into the power meter. What happens if we put that 50 feet of RG213 into the mix? Now we're still running from a lithium iron phosphate battery, but we've added 50 feet of RG213 
to the transmitter so let's or to the repeater let's go ahead and see what that gives us and it looks like we're getting just over nine watts now and that's just a good reminder of why we only want to run the needed amount of coax so we can eliminate any extra losses now one of the things that i was really curious to see was how much power this thing was going to consume a when it's just sitting there and b when we're transmitting on it because my plan is to run this as a battery operated system with solar panels. So what you can see is right now it's giving us about 1.5 watts or so. It kind of varies up and down. Keep in mind though this is not the most accurate meter but it gives us a general idea. Now when we transmit what kind of power are we going to see or power draw are we going to see on this. And let's go ahead and key that up and you're looking at about 5 amps or somewhere around 60 watts. So we'll have a little bit of runtime considering the fact that we're going to be using a 100 amp hour battery with this unit. Now while we're talking about power consumption, let's talk about the solar setup that I'm going to run with this unit. I'm going to put a 100 amp hour battery in place with it and a 100 watt solar panel. That 100 amp hour battery will give me about 1280 watt hours of power. Now I'm thinking that they're going to be using this repeater maybe 10% of the time, maybe. I really don't even see them using it that much, but for the sake of these numbers, I went ahead and calculated 10%. Uh, for their transmit time. So if we, and I'm, guys, I'm rounding up some numbers here just to make the math a little bit easier. If we're talking about 70 watts while we're transmitting, well, that's only seven watts per hour if we're only transmitting 10% of the time. The rest of the time it's going to be on receive. Let's say it's two watts on receive. 90% of the time, that's what it's going to be doing. That gives us a consumption of 1.8 watts for the receive over the course of one hour. Add those two numbers together, that gives us 8.8. .8. Round that up and we'll call it nine hours. Now, we take the power that's available in that battery, so in this case, 1,280 watt hours, divide it by nine, and that gives us a runtime of roughly 142 hours or almost six days. And that doesn't take any solar into consideration. And the reason I wanted to run the math that way is because we all know when those winter days hit, it might stay cloudy for several days in a row, and we've got very short days in the months of December and January. So I really wanted to beef up this system so that I didn't have to worry about those long dreary days of winter. So there's a look at the Redivus RT97L repeater, which I think is going to be the perfect solution for the communications problem on my daughter's property. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.